I don't know about fish catching, but this is one of my favorite looking colors of all time. It is a flow orange, sort of like a, an, an orange hunting hat, but it's got that coach dog pattern on the side, a little black nose, couple of eyes. Oh man, that is a really cool bomber bait. Retro bassin, kicking some ass in wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'. What is going on, Bassin Buds? Welcome to Retro Bassin. So apologies in advance, we did not get a video up this Saturday. I've got a number of different Retro Bassin projects in various stages of completion, and we just were not able to get any of them across the finish line last night. That being said, I do have a fair bit of mail from Bassin Buds piling up under the old retro desk, and we're gonna get into that today. By the way, if this is your first time here at Retro Bassin and you like to fish it old school, I'm talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment from fishing days gone past, stick around, consider subscribing, and be sure to hit that bell icon. Otherwise, you won't know we post a new video like this one. So, one of the coolest things about this channel are the Bassin Buds. I get to meet both virtually and in person around the country and at this point around the world. So I have gotten a few different pieces of mail at the old retro P.O. box as of late and I've been saving them for a special occasion. So this is a box that came actually from um, one of my good bass and buds by the name of Todd Keaton who actually has his own YouTube channel that he's just getting going called Bassing 101 and I'll drop a link to that down below. He actually did a really cool video as of late. I sent him some old school tackle and he opened it up on camera. So if you guys want to check out Todd opening some retro mail, I will drop a link to that in the description of, of this video. But as a little return favor, Todd sent me this. <laughs> it sounds rattly. All right, we're gonna get out my little uh, baby Mora knife today and see how we do with this. So Todd sent this a while back and I've been traveling so much that honestly, I feel bad I had not gotten a chance to rip open a pretty good bit of the mail that's been sitting underneath the desk. But I'm curious as to what we've got inside. Oh, ho, ho. holy cow, there's a lot of stuff here. All right, we've got a letter from Todd. I will read this before we get into the old school gold inside. It says, Dear Retro Brother, uh, I think you'll find this box fascinating. Some things you have been wanting and some things are a surprise. Hope you can use this and you might need a, another box. As always, the best to you and your family and may the Father bless you. Todd, P.S. Keep it old school. As always. All right, so let's check out what Mr. Todd sent us. Ooh, I see some lures on here that are wrapped up and I see some notes as well. Oh, that is awesome. You know, I am not the expert on probably about 90% of the stuff that I feature on this channel. So anytime uh, you Bass and Buds can help me out with the information, I much, much appreciate it. Um, what am I gonna start with? Bop, 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 bop. Well, we'll start with some little lures here. Uh, the first one says, this is a Bomber 8A screw tail. Okay, that's pretty cool. If you can, guys can see that, he's leaving me little notes. So the Bomber screw tail is an interesting one. I don't know exactly when they stopped doing that, but I think at some point, um, the rear hook of the bait had one of those eyelets that gets screwed into the bait. After that, 
they started molding that eyelet into place so you can kind of differentiate how old a bomber is via the tail connection. Oh, wow, look at this. And what I love about any bait that Todd sends me is he's kind of a uh, nerd for hooks like I am, so he always soups these things up with some nice hooks. Wow, look at that. So that is a super pretty Bomber 8A. That is the bigger of the two. Uh, I'm more familiar with that 7A, but that 8A is a nice little bait, and that is a gold chrome. Now, we talk about the screw tail, so take a look right here. So that eyelet right there, this is actually screwed into the bait, unlike this one, which is molded. The newer bombers, everything is molded just like this, the front and the back. But, ooh, man, that is a good bait. Let's uh, see if this thing has an old school sounding rattle. What do you think? Yeah, buddy. Nice. All right, so it says late 70s Devil's Horse with logo. Wow, that's crazy. Um, Todd must have known I was going to go down a Smithwick rabbit hole. Uh, oh, ho, ho, look at that. Okay, wow, that is, yeah, <laughs> I love those old baits. So there is a glorious looking Smithwick Devil's Horse and... He says the logo, you can see it right there on the bait. This is the larger of the two sizes, and Todd has definitely souped up the hooks on this. You can see that pretty sweet looking Mickey Mouse spinner on the front of it. Uh, that's pretty cool, man. Um, it's kind of crazy, but coming out of Bacon's Tackle, all of that great Smithwick gear, that's all headed for the museum. None of that came home with me, so I actually don't have a ton of Smithwick bait, so uh, Todd, brother, thank you for that. That is definitely gonna be a caster. Oh, good looking bait. All right, so this says 1987 Pose 200. So what is cool about this being from 1987, it's gonna be pre Yakima Bait Company. And um, as you guys know, my kind of critique of, of Pose when it went over to Yakima is the bills really got fragile. It was sort of a precarious build design anyway, and I'll show you that. But once it got over to Yakima, it got much more precarious. So there is the Pose 200, which is actually one of the harder superseders to find. Now, the way that this eyelet on the bill is, is it's actually molded right into the bill itself. And on the newer pose baits, what tends to happen is you get a hairline crack right down the middle of the bill. So anything um, sort of post that old fish package that they used to come in uh, is going to be a little bit suspect in my opinion. But that is a good looking bait. So the pose 200, um, I don't know, is that the dead eye? That feels kind of heavy. I see some sort of lead in there, so I don't know if that is the, the old dead eye suspending pose or not. I'll have to ask Todd about that. Um, but either way, that thing is going right in the old Umco tackle box. Oh, wow. What is this? Um, this is a Bill Dance 6F. Oh, man, this is totally one that I have been looking for. Um, oh, let's check this thing out. Oh, wow. That is, oh man, the old Bill Dance 6F, and F stands for fat. That, son, is a fat looking, ooh, pretty crankbait. So this is a pretty cool color too, by the way. I don't know what this color fat A is called, but it's a, Sort of like an old fire tiger, but it's translucent with a little bit of reflective tape in the middle of that bait. Oh, wow. Um, that is really cool. You can see, holy smokes, I had no idea how many rattles were inside the old Bomber 6F. Look at that. That thing looks like a rattle trap, doesn't it? <laughs> That's wild. 
Let's listen to this bad boy. Kind of sounds like a rattle trap too, doesn't it? Oh man. These actually are some glorious baits. Ah, uh, this is awesome. So we've got here another Bomber 8A screw tail. Holy cow. Check this out. Ooh, in a pretty sweet natural smallmouth color. Look at that bad boy. And that's a nice sort of golden lip. I don't know if that thing came that way. Um, that is a good looking bomber. And you can see right there, that is totally an old screw tail. Woo, man. How does this guy sound? Oh, that's a nice low thump too, isn't it? I love the red eyes on that bait too. Oh man, those are pretty. All right, what do we have here? This looks like a 1991 Pose Deadeye. Oh, so wait a minute. So that 200, yeah, that must not be the Deadeye because this thing looks just a little bit different. Let's check this thing out. Oh, wow. I have been looking for one of these for a long, long time. Check out how pretty that bait is. That thing is so brown, it's almost black. Look at that orange belly. Woof. So the old Pose Deadeye, it actually is kind of similar to that 200, to be honest with you. But now that I'm looking at them side by side, you can see there's definitely a few differences. Does this thing rattle? Oh no, that is a silent, suspending, ooh, son of a gun of a crankbait. Awesome. Man, that is really, really cool. Uh, yeah, I might just have to throw this at some point. That is, that's a good looking bait. Oh, looks like a Bill Dance 6F. bubble wrap off of this thing. Ooh, so there we go. You can see uh, the old Bill Dance signature on the side. Oh man, that is a pretty looking bait too, isn't it? That is almost like a baby striper color, but it's translucent. I don't know the name of that. I know that's definitely not it. Um, but that is another good looking bait. So yeah, those, um, let's hold these two 6Fs up together and check them out. Um, you could totally do some damage with those guys. Look at that. Oh, man. <laughs> those are awesome. All right, we've got a Bomber 8A screw tail. So, woo, three of these screw tails. These are tough, by the way. Oh, wow, this one is a really cool old school color. Look at that. It is a translucent shad, but it's got that metal insert right down the middle of the bait. So it gives it this really awesome, almost 3D effect. And of course, that thing is <laughs> yellowed with age. Oh, wow, that is a really cool bait. Now that I'm looking at this bait, you can see it actually has just one rattle right in the bill. And that's why this thing has such a low thump. That's the only rattle in this whole bait. It's just one single knocker that kind of goes right from left to right. Uh, but that is a really cool screw tail bait as well. So awesome. Uh, I've got enough of those that I can confidently start casting that Bomber 8A. Ooh. This one is gonna be a collector, an early 1980s bomber in, <laughs> you can preview the color, you know what that thing is. That's that fluorescent crawdad color, oh man. This was <laughs> like the alternative version when they had the first Fire Tiger first came out and they called it green crawdad. They also had this color, which I don't know about fish catching, but this is one of my favorite looking colors of all time. It is a flow orange, sort of like a, an, an orange hunting hat, but it's got that 
coach dog pattern on the side little black nose couple of eyes oh man that is a really cool bomber bait look at that i love the old school bombers i've got to go check out and see if the uh, original bomber factory is still around i know that it is in texas i think at this point it just consists of a wall that might say bomber on it uh, but that might be a, a little bucket list destination I need to check out. Man, that's a cool bait, though. Ha <laughs> ha! Ah, I don't know what we have here. At all. <gasps> what is this? Oh, man, these are awesome. So these look like some really cool reproduction old school signs. It says head and made, well made. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really cool. And what's this one? It says the genuine head and spook river runt. Man, Todd, where did you get these? These are really, really cool. Oh yeah. Speaking of bomber, look at that. That is awesome. Well, thank you, brother. I will definitely be hanging these bad boys up somewhere behind me in the old retro studio. And one more thing. <sighs> this looks like a Daiwa Millionaire S250. It's got some Japanese writing on it. Wow. <laughs> I was scared to open this thing. Holy cow. So what do we have here? Dude, are you kidding me? Holy smokes, Bass and Buds. Check out that piece of machinery. Wow, that is one glorious looking Daiwa reel. Todd, of course, is my Daiwa guru. When I've got a um, problem with any of my reels, I pretty much call him up, or more appropriately, I send him my reels to fix. And um, wow, that is awesome that you sent this along. So I have never thrown the uh, Millionaire 250, but that is, oh, that is silky smooth like warm butter. Holy cow. So I'll give you guys the angles on this reel. Oh, man. That thing is awesome. So I've got to figure out what rod to put this on because I am totally going to be throwing this. You could throw some of these, honestly, probably some of these bombers on this bad boy. Wow. <laughs> what else? It actually comes with a spare spool as well, which is cool. It's got the manual. So yeah, man, this has got all of the original goods. Uh, Todd, I'm going to have to ask you how much you fish this thing, because this thing, honestly, looks pretty much like new old stock to me. Wow. <laughs> uh, I've got a feeling I'm going to have to put a little retro care pack in the mail for Todd, like, real soon. So, Todd, thanks again for that uh, epically old school care pack. And Bassin' Buds, thank you all for tuning in for this little episode of Retro Bassin'. Do me a favor, head on over to Todd's YouTube channel. It's Bassin101, that is B-A-S-S-I-N apostrophe 101, but I'm going to be dropping links to that all over in the description and comments as well. You might have noticed, by the way, we got a little bit of Retro Bassin' merch going on. We just reordered the shirts, hats and stickers or slaps as Epic Eric calls them. Uh, so if you guys head on over to txprovisions.com, um, you can get hooked up with all the retro gear. And until next time, Bass and Buds, keep the carpet side up and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'.